2012, a 71 year old female patient underwent right renal artery cover stenting due to an aneurysm in an outside hospital. The procedure was complicated by the dislodgement of the stent into the aneurysm sac. Shortly after, the patient was transferred to our unit fully anticoagulated and with maintained renal function. The left brachial artery was accessed, the right renal artery was cannulated and the selective angiography was performed showing the right renal aneurysm with the dislodged stent. Our options were the following. Snare and pull the stent completely into the aneurysm sac and then perform a reconstruction with a longer stent. Try to cannulate the stent and go through it, then place a connecting stent with the proximal renal artery. Our third option was to pass a guide wire next to the fixated portion of the stent into the distal renal artery and place another stent alongside it. Additionally, embolize the dislodged end of the stent if needed, or pack the aneurysm with coils to support stent deployment. We opted for the third option. A guide wire was passed alongside the previous stent and a 5 by 15 mm wire bomb was introduced. As the wire bomb was being opened, we encountered the same issue. The stent protruded into the large aneurysm, forming a V-shaped kink. The phenomenon is called bow stringing. The wirebound stent opens using a pull cord mechanism that pulls a thread on the distal end of the graft to release the stent from the delivery shaft. This essentially opens the graft from distal to proximal. Bow stringing can occur due to several issues. The stiffness of the guide wire is not enough to provide adequate support. Too rapid opening of the graft can cause it to slip out from the landing zone and open in the cavern of the aneurysm without side support. The flow in the aneurysm pushes it inside the sac. The angulation builds up too much tension that kicks the stent out into the sac with a spring-like mechanism. In this case, with the retraction of the guide wire, we managed to straighten the graft. Care must be taken not to lose the wire purchase in the distal part of the artery in this case. We managed to maintain wire access and performed an angiography that showed that our stent's proximal end at the proximal neck was inside the sac. We extended our graft with a 7 by 50 mm wire band into the proximal renal artery. Control angiography demonstrated some late filling of the sac, so we performed balloon angioplasty at the ceiling zones. Completion angiography showed good results with patent renal artery in distal branches and exclusion of the aneurysm. In the following case, a 52-year-old male presented with a 4-cm popliteal artery aneurysm with an acute angulation at the proximal neck. The aneurysm was crossed with a stiff O18 guide wire. A 7 by 250 mm stent was introduced. During deployment, we experienced severe bow string effect that pulled out the distal part of the stent from the intended landing zone. This was managed with the same technique, the pullback of the delivery system and the wire. Ultimately, it caused a loose seal at the distal neck, so we completed a reconstruction with another 7 by 100 mm wire band. We attempted to straighten the proximal kink with the balloon angioplasty, but the results were moderate, so we deployed a 7 by 90 mm VBX balloon expandable cover stand here. This was post dilated with an 8 mm balloon. Completion angiography showed good results with the resolution of the kink and exclusion of the aneurysm. It is controversial and undoubtedly unusual to use balloon expandable stents in the extremities due to the risk of compression and stent fracture. Still, we felt this short stent was necessary in this case to support straightening this kink with relatively low risk.